Hey. Hey, here's your mama. <laughs> here's your mama, P. She right here. Stop all that hollering. You know, kids go to falling out and clowning on you so bad. I'm right here. I'm right here. I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you. Yes. Yes. Hello. Hey. Y'all miss me. See? Do you not know I was sitting over there on that other page thinking that I was on the fan I was on the fan page and I was on the friends page. And I knew something was wrong when I kept looking down for two minutes. And then I looked back about four minutes later and it still got 32 people following it. I'm like, something is straight wrong with this. We are on the friends page and not the fans page. See, now here we are. Okay, so that just kind of stressed me a little bit. So, can I get some cold juice, please? Okay, give me something cold. Where's they store? They got a store right there. Anyway. I was talking a few minutes ago, before I realized I wasn't on the right page, I was talking about sometimes when you have done all that you know that is right to do, and things don't always work out that way, you know, I'm telling you, I'm learning how to perfect hiccups, if that makes any sense to you at all. I'm, I'm, I'm literally practicing how to be flexible when there's a hiccup. Do you not know that the majority of the time, y'all, and I'm just, I'm talking to y'all because, you know, like yesterday I was traveling, we planned to be here to do at three with me, and it was so much. It was like, you know, me finishing up the conference, which was amazing, which God did such an amazing work. And then I started rushing, you know, and um, when the conference was over with, I, I had to do um, about maybe four hours or so of interviews. And um, I did that. And when I got done with the interviews, then I went upstairs and I preached, give me the cranberry juice. Mm -hmm. um, I got up and I ministered. And as soon as I got done ministering, I had to go back upstairs to be interviewed for um, a feature in a magazine. And uh, that took, you know, quite a while. And so, you know, by the time I got to bed, um, it was like something like four in the morning, something like that. And then I had to get up. And I had to have a slight meeting with Danielle because of some things that we were planning for the Atlanta area. And I went straight to the airport, still trying to make it all work. And of course, you know, flights doing what they do. And it just didn't work out yesterday. And I was like, just so like, everybody was like, you not upset? And I said, no, because number one, Everybody on this page know that there is no place I would rather be than with y'all at three. No, I can't think of any place. I mean, I'm working on some projects right now that I'm in the midst of saying to them, is this going to affect what I do at three o'clock? And so, you know, they're looking at me like, okay, all right. No, I wanna know. Is this going to affect what I have been called to do at three with me? Is there a way we can incorporate all of this? Because I have a genuine bond to you all. And it's not a it's not a bond like, you know, a bond like religion. It's like a it's like a bond that I just need to know that you all are okay. I just need to know that you're very okay that um, your life is okay and that you can finally see yourself coming out, coming through it. And with that being said, I cannot impart something if I don't have it. And so the thing that I've been practicing on for my own personal life 
is understanding the challenges of understand the challenges of when things don't go well when 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 it doesn't go like you planned it and I'm not, I'm not talking about oh this didn't turn out the way I planned it I'm talking about those abrupt hiccups one of my workers was telling me um, that they got stuck in the elevator yesterday I'm telling you yesterday was a day they got stuck in the elevator and they said before they knew it, you know, a few minutes passed by, and all of a sudden they just panicked. They said they was in the elevator going off, like properties I was going off. They were in that elevator for 45 minutes. The power shut down, the air shut down, and I said, so what did all of that get you? When you got through screaming and saying, y'all better come open up this elevator door right now. I'm caught and beating them people's wall. Did that start the elevator up? She busted out laughing. She said, no. I said, we have to learn how to work through challenges without losing who we are. When you're being challenged by something uh, because you were prepared. Yeah, yeah. How about that right there? You're being challenged by something. Danielle had some challenges, and I just kept telling her, stay calm. It's going to be all right. It's going to work itself out. And it ended up being one of the most amazing conferences she has ever had. Because you know what, on the other side of that mishap, of that hiccup, there are some things that God is trying to do to make that situation better for you. If you just don't panic. If you just don't allow yourself to get all intertwined with what didn't go the way you planned and miss the opportunity to replan something else. Are you hearing this? And so I started thinking about that. That was the first thought um, with you all. And I started saying, you know, everybody know I wanna be on this page. And everybody on this page know, if I'm not on this page, and it comes like 305, you know, cause sometimes we have technical uh, uh, situations just like on yesterday, I tried to go on and so, we start testing the internet and she starts saying the internet is not going to let us go on. So, you know, of course, we're getting new equipment that we can travel with now so that the um, internet would be locked into an ethernet, which would be locked into the main drive of their servers. So we're not dependent on Wi-Fi. So we made a decision to do that and to purchase that piece of equipment. So going forward, it's going to be better. We'll be able to go live in hotels and not have those problems because we have to tap into their Wi-Fi. So, upon, you know, trying yesterday, I was standing in the room and she was trying to make it go and it kept shutting off and the whole nine yards and she said, this is not gonna work. Well, everybody knew that I wanted to be on live, but I couldn't. And that's the reason why as a person that have been called to this page, so now you don't have to wonder why. Why does Dr. Bynum preach so hard when she sit down here? Why does she pour so much out when she's sitting here? For times like this, for times like this, when it's going to be an inopportune time and I won't be able to get on live at three with me, my children, the people that I'm called to, they're not starving. It's like your mama. It's like your mama start cooking you breakfast and, or you know, she cook you breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day, every day, every day, every day, every day, every day. And then all of a sudden, your mama got to go out. And your mama got to go to work. And kids be talking about, and what we going to eat? And what did your mama say? You better get in there and fix you some cereal. You better go get you some hot dogs. Because mama ain't cooking today. Mama got to do something. Same thing. I lay food on the table for you. And there's enough laying there for you to pick and choose when something goes wrong. Because you have to understand this. While I'm thinking about y'all, and I'm trying to bring my head in because I don't like to be inconsistent. I don't like to give somebody my word that I'm going to do something, and I don't. And so it just whips my spirit. So while I'm trying to get adjusted to that, trying to get adjusted to Okay, they're going to be all right. They're not going to die for one day if you're not there. By the same token, 
I'm looking around and I'm saying, wow, the church looks so different. It's like, it's so not what it used to be. And I just want somebody to feel me on this one today. It's like I feel a lump in my chest today. Like, I feel sad. Like, like, like I can't swallow deep. Because we're losing something. And it's not what it used to be. That, the sincerity, the, the, the heartfelt concern. And I was looking... the janitor going down the hallway so that's one of them things you don't you don't anticipate and he's just doing his job right in the middle of you talking mm -hmm. but um i was looking around in danielle's conference and i left that conference though i was so blessed and though the people of god all of us oh my god it was such a moment i ached at the same time to see the hunger of so many people. To see men, women, young women, older women wanting to be fed. And you look around, it almost felt like somebody standing in the middle of a yard full of a bunch of pit bulls and they haven't eaten in like 30 days and you got the only steak. That's what it felt like. like you stand there pulling out the only steak and you look around and all these dogs haven't eaten and they just like, that's the only steak in this yard. That's what it felt like. You could feel the hunger and you could feel them saying, can you just feed us? And then I walked away in my mind saying, why are they starving? Why, is people, why does it have that feeling, that feeling everywhere I go? that people are hungry, even on this page, that, that, that you all are hungry and you just tired of the drama and tired of the craziness. And I mean, and I think about it and I'm like, it's game over, for real though. It's really game over. God gonna, God gonna get us, it's game over. It, all of this, all of this craziness that's going on in the body of Christ. I was talking to somebody who was telling me how, you know, they, 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 they're, they're with people that are, you know, that, that preach and whatever, whatever, and get through, and they just going on out in club. Like straight from church. Straight from ministry. Straight from preaching and prophesying. Are you hearing me? And they go right on out clubbing. Like, this is what we do. I, I'm just like, God, has it come to that? Has it come to that? And that is the reason why I'm so sensitive about this page. Because if nobody else believes in the gospel, believes in the word of God, believes in the principles of living a life of integrity and truth. Okay, let's just say, y'all. Let's just say, for the sake of argument, because I saw something on my page. It was a post from a man, and um, he was like, you know, y'all crazy, y'all stupid, y'all Christian. Ain't nobody believing in no virgin Mary, no virgin birth, and all this. And you, you believe this stuff, you need to be locked up, and you need some medicine. And I... I just posted and said, then lock me up and give me the medicine. And then the Lord, I begin to text to respond to him, which I don't always respond to everybody. I just don't. But this time something happened in my spirit. And I went to respond to him. And something said, go over to his page and look. And when I went over to his page and his picture came up, I saw the saddest eyes that I have ever seen in a long time. I saw somebody that was so full of pain and I said, God, what do you want me to say? 
And he said, I want you to minister to this man. And I can't go into all of what I wrote. If you want to read it, then go there and read it. Um, and it was a long, kind of a lengthy post, much more lengthier than I'm usually used to writing. But I said one of the things that I made clear, and that is when people don't believe in God or people don't believe in in, 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 in Christianity or whatever, that's one thing. And most people don't even care. But when a person strikes out to be that angry at people that you don't know and to be that angry about a God you don't believe in, there's something else that sits behind that. There's something, there's something else. There's some, there's some hurts and there's some underlying things that's sitting behind that. And you got to watch that with people. You can't be so quick to jump on a person's storm because when that much venom is coming out because they slammed the door too hard or that much aggression is coming out because you dropped the juice and, and, and broke it or you know you didn't return an ink pen on your job there are some other things that are working behind that and I just begin to minister the love of God to him and I, I, I begin to let him know you know it, when, you, when you go and you look at stuff like that and you got one person responding to your post and four people responding to your post. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about where is Christianity in the spirit of it? Is anybody understanding what I'm trying to say today? Where is that feeling? That's why I had to come on this page. I had to come on this page because if that's what we are doing now, and if this is what this page represents, then we got to keep this page. We got to keep this page. If coming on this page and me coming on this page is giving us that sensing of this is the real body of Christ and this is the real love of God and this is the real care that I need for my Christian walk. This is the real level of correction that I'm looking for for my life. Then we gotta keep this page. Because let me say this to you. Let's just humor ourselves for a minute. And let's just say it ain't no God. Go with me for a second. Cause I thought about this long and hard. Let's just humor ourselves to say there is no God. Humor ourselves to say that the Bible is wrong. And that the Bible is some bunch of crap. Let's just humor ourselves to say that. Let's just humor ourselves to say that all of the messages that they say, Paul, God, and this one, God, and that one, God, is all crap. Okay. If that being the case then there was a system and a spirit that had been put in place that because of the principles of what I have been teaching and the principles of what I have been living by and the principles that you're watching that is causing change in your life, it's turning all of us into better people, if nothing else. If nothing else, let's just say the Ark of the Covenant wasn't as big as they say it was. Let's just say when Jesus died on the cross, it wasn't as long as they thought it was. Let's just say he was buried in the ground and not a tomb. But what I am saying is that the principles that I have taught from that book have changed all of our lives. For the better. For the better. So then let's just say that, that Christianity is not real then why would something that is not real, that is fictitious, that the Bible ain't real, that God ain't real, why would it cause people to get better? Think about that. that that's like a thought out by itself. You want, you want to talk about a mystery? I'm giving you a mystery right now. Why would something that is not God cause us to be better? We can't say because I believed in myself. Because before we came to these principles, ourselves were destructive. 
ourselves were depressed and ourselves was doing just like that man. It was attacking everything that we could possibly think of. Ourselves wasn't content with anybody and anything. Are you hearing this? Are you hearing this? Ourselves were aggressively mean and out of sorts. And now we've been sitting here since July 2nd. July 2nd. And all of us, none of us is the same. None of us. Let me see what y'all saying. Let me see what y'all saying. Yes. 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 None of us are the same. I'm not the same. Y'all always say, oh, mother, you really teaching us. No. God is teaching all of us. I'm not the same. Do you think I can sit here like this and, 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 and minister the lessons that God has given me to minister and none of this stuff penetrates me? None of us are the same. I'm not the same. Every time I sit down here, something in me change. Something about me change. That's why I know that change is in it. That's why I know it's not fake. That's why I know it's real. Because I want you to understand something. Believing is free. Doesn't cost you anything. And that's why people have the ability to believe so much. Because it doesn't cost them anything, but by the same token, there is a penalty behind what you say you believe. Now, he just said something right there. I'm just going to sip this juice. Are we okay? I'm just going to sip this juice. Believing it is free. And ain't nobody going to get in your way. Ain't nobody going to get in your way about nothing you believe. But you better believe there's a penalty behind what you choose to believe. Mm -hmm. There's a payment behind what you choose to believe because what you choose to believe affects who you are. And when it affects who you are, it affects your character. It affects everything about you. It affects what you will receive. It, it really, it affects what you do. It affects how you treat people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. So you can believe that. That man can believe that. He can believe that. But if you don't have any friends and you don't have nobody following you, he wants to say something. And this page gave him a, an audience that he would have never got on his own page because he's angry about something. He's angry about the system of religion. He's not angry about God because you can't possibly know God. Now, I'm going to tell you something. There's some stuff that goes on about the system that can piss you off real hard. I'm going to keep it real and keep it 100. There is some stuff that you will see in the system and the religious aspect that would just make you want to go somewhere and vomit. If you're looking for something that is wrong, you will find it in a whole lot of things. I'm talking about in a whole lot of things and you won't have to look for it. And what am I doing then on this page? I'm trying to show you that the scripture says that the word of God is powerful. Now watch this. I quoted last night that the word of God, it's powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing to the dividing, to the separating of the soul, which is your life, and spirit. The soul, which is the breath that is given to life and what you do with the breath that's given to life and then the spirit, which is the breath of the assignment. It is the breath of the assignment. Is the breath of the original assignment intent in God. And it's what you do 
with the breath of the spirit that you're given. And so the word of God comes to divide that so that you would have discernment, being able to differentiate what is of God and what is of my flesh and what part of this soul life that I have that needs to be rectified because now I possess the breath of the spirit, which means now you're not only taking in a deep breath, you're taking it, you're breathing through by way of the spirit of God, which is the assignment of God and not just the breath of God. So now you become conscious that there's an assignment that is now imparted into my life. Now watch this. So what am I trying to do on this page? What is the point I'm trying to make on this page? I'm trying to bring you to a point that your focus becomes your assignment and not a system. I'm gonna let that sit right there and drink this juice. Tap that screen if I just said something. Tap that screen if I just said something. I'm telling y'all, I came down here because I love y'all, because y'all know I'm tired. You ain't got to ask yourself about me. I, you know I am. But this thing was on me. I could have stayed upstairs in that bed, but this, this just sat on me for y'all. And I just said, I can't, after what I'm looking at, I can't miss at three with me if I absolutely don't have to miss it. Because I can't let one day slip not one day slip that you don't get. See, I'm about to cry, and I didn't come down here for all these emotions. I mean, they gotta put more emojis on here or something. I get full when I talk about this, and I can't be pouring out like this, and I gotta preach on TV tonight. But I get full because I can't let you miss not one dot, not one tittle, because you cannot go back to perversion. You cannot go back to the entanglement of Leviathan. The truth cannot get twisted in you because you have reverted your womb back to the womb of perversion. And you have not allowed the conversion of God to finish implementing itself into your life. Are you hearing this? Are you hearing this? So, when it comes down to you understanding that you need to start compacting your spirit. Like, okay, I don't know, if we, are we still on? Because I, I might get no movement over here. Are we still on? Because I, I, I can't, you can't miss what I'm saying to you right now. You can't miss it. You can't miss it. He didn't turn this back on because somebody called the, called the phone right in the middle of um, And it was a Google voicemail, so it must have been somebody from off the page. Um, you got to begin to compact your life um, and fill it with, fill it with, we are still on, fill it with what I'm trying to give you not me, not me, not me. Let me make this clear. Not me. I'm not trying to harness a people. I'm trying to free you to be able to go to church without throwing up. It ain't no other way to say it. I'm trying to free you to, to, to have an opportunity to have the liberty to do what God has asked you to do. And that's not to forget to assemble yourselves together. But how can I? When, when I walk in there, everywhere I look, I just want to throw my hands up. Okay, I'll give you some perfect examples. People getting up leaving praise and worship, and you know it ain't about worship. It's all about them. It's their moment. It's their outfit. They done spent hours on the phone the night before shooting photographs to their girlfriends about what they're going to wear when they get up to do worship. 
And which one look right, girl? This one look right. But what about this one? But when I turn this way, how does this make me look? No, I think that make you, okay, I'm going to wear this color. I'm going to wear that color. So you know what? It's not about God, I'm laying down on my face Saturday night. That's what we used to have to do. My brother and I led worship at, at Pastor Nichols Church. And whoever was going to lead worship on Sunday, your Saturday is just erasing because you wasn't getting one. No, you didn't go nowhere. You stayed in the house all day. You laid out before God. I remember my brother would be in that room playing one worship song after the next worship song after the next one. And he would have probably played maybe 50 songs. And when I started hearing him play a couple of them over and over and over again, I said, that's what the Spirit of God is saying. And he would get up on Sunday morning and leave worship and take that church into a realm in worship and never get an opportunity to sing a second song. Because the thing of it is, is that as a worshiper, you just looking for a door to get into the realm. You're not looking to impress people about how many songs you can sing and how many keys you can run and I can run the scales. We're not impressed. We're sick of it. We just want somebody to get up and give us worship. Take me into the realm of God. Take me where you already are. Not trying to take me somewhere that you don't go yourself. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm trying to see who, who I'm talking to. She's still working on the phone. I'm just saying. I'm just being honest. I'm just being honest. Everybody, the, the whole praise team, it's all about fashion. It's all about my bow tie. It's all about my shoes. Then it's all about how, 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 how funky we can look to show them that we, that we are the millennials. And there's a change coming, but no anointing. Musicians have perfected, I mean, some of the best playing musicians you have ever heard in the church. I remember mean, when it was an organ and a beat down drum. Now they got all kind of keyboards, five and six keyboards over there. Two and three people that can play the same keyboard. And everybody trying to have their moment. No, that's enough about the system that'll make you want to throw up. So you get through going through all that hype. And then you come down and ready to hear a word from God. And that ain't annoying like it should be. And you sitting there going, I just wish I could walk out of here right now. No, but what is my job? My job, when I understand the principles of the spirit, my job is to impart in the atmosphere the maturity of what I know. Because there's a spiritual release coming out of you. And what you don't understand is being on this page, God is shifting you to be able to affect atmospheres. Are you hearing me? Because everybody just can't stop going to church. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry, I gotta be the one to tell you this. I know people say, that's why I don't go no more. That's why I hate church. And that's why I get that. I get you. And I feel you. Oh, do I feel you. I feel you when the message is like a bag of chips. And I'm talking about them 100 calorie bags that they give you. I feel you. When you done laid before God and, 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 and studied and the Lord has been speaking prophetic, profound words to you. And you've had worship that has blessed your life. And then you come to church and it's just tired and empty. And you just go, this is like really not it. And you know what? If everybody don't start understanding that there is a divine shift that is taking place around the world. I want you to hear me. Let me see who this is. Tap that screen if you listen to what I'm saying. There is a divine shift shift that is taking place around the world and it it's like the people in the pew ain't having it no more the people in the pew let me tell you what has happened years of mother boy mother stacks mother dupree bishop collins bishop stacks pastor boy my dad Bishop Austin, I mean, people that I can go on and name, Benson Itahosa from Africa, uh, 
all the years that people have been in ministry, John Eckhart, all the years that people have been in ministry, watch this. I started preaching when I was 12, ran my first revival at 16. All the years, some of you on this page have said to me, I've been following you for years. I've been following you for 20 years. I've been following you for 15 years. Okay, let me take a sip on this because this right here is going to be a light bulb moment. What y'all think done happened to all them babies that's been taught all them years? Because I, I think people done forgot. What, some of my staff is sitting over here. What has happened to all these children that was 12 years old, 13 years old, 15 years old, 17 years old, when mother boy was slapping us down and putting the oil on us and Bishop Stacks was praying for us, Bishop Austin, Pastor Boy, we grew up. And we grew up hearing a live word. The same scripture says in the front part that the words that God speaks, they are spirit and the Amplified Bible said, and they are activated. The Amplified Bible said they are, they are activated and they are being put in the action and they are causing us to prosper and move into greater things in God. Are you hearing that? The words that God speak, not what you steal from other people's tapes. Not messages that you steal that you ain't never prayed through. Not all this weak junk you up here talking about and dancing across the floor. It don't, that ain't it because we done grew up. And most of you that are on this page, I will tell you this. The only reason why you are attracted to this page, either you somebody that never really knew God like that, that maybe you was born up in a way where you've never really known about the church and you've never known God and you know your life is in a position where this was life changing to you and you're finally understanding God. Or, or you are one of them babies that was raised up on real God, real prayer, real Holy Ghost, real holiness, real preaching that was birthed out in prayer and fasting. And now you're in a place where you're saying, I don't want this garbage that I see. I need a real word. And I need a word from somebody I know is praying for a word. Not somebody who's performing for a word. Are you hearing me? Somebody you know is laying down your life for this thing. So we don't grow up. So what you going to do with these babies? Because Mother Boyd is gone. So you can't go get her and say, Mother, teach to them because they they're in a backslidden condition. Sister Stacks, bless her heart. Bless her heart. She's still alive. And I believe, you know what? I was told that God keep taking her into shut-ins. One after the next. Because I believe God is, God is stacking Mother Stacks up. Mother Stacks getting ready to cut loose. I'm going to tell you that right now. If you ain't never heard of Gertrude Stacks, go and look her up. God getting ready to release her. And when he do, he is coming for... Listen, listen. I was... The other day I was praying and I was like, I need to go call Mother Stacks because I, I need prayer. I need, I need somebody to lay hands on me. I need somebody that's dipped in God to just pray for me. You know, it, it, it's, it, it's something when you say, I'm praying for you. But I'm talking about real Holy Ghost hands laid on you. That, that's all they do is lay in God. Do anybody understand what I'm saying? Or am I just having a moment? Am I just having a moment? No, I need somebody to put some oil on my head and lay hands on me. And whatever they find, if they find anything. I mean, I've been doing my own cleaning. You know, I be walking around, I tell my staff, I say, can you spot my life? I asked them that, can you spot my life? Because the minute they say, well, yeah, I saw you do. No, no, no. Can you spot my life? Can you look at my life and say, you, ke you catch me in sin? You catch me sinning? No, you can't. But that don't mean it ain't nothing down in there trying to hide. And see, that's what the Gertrude Stacks do. They lay their hands on you and they don't, they don't, they, they don't pray for you first. They, she kind of touch you different places because she's trying to find that demon. 
See, we don't know nothing about that. We don't, some of y'all on this page don't know nothing about that. They be touching your stomach, and when she find that thing in the power of God, let me tell you, let me tell you what I know. When I'm telling you freedom come in the room, freedom come in the room. And that's what I, I just want that. I want that for you. I want that for us. I don't want us to get gained out of an experience. I don't want us to settle. Please don't settle. Please tell me on this page you're not going to settle. Don't settle. We not settling for a cup of tea when we came for a meal. Don't give me no biscuit and no tea and put some honey on it and say, eat this, because all that's doing, that bread is blowing up inside of you and making you full. That honey is making it feel like it's sweet, so we jump all over the church shower. And that tea, when it hit that bread, it blows it up to make you feel like you're full and like it's fulfilling the thirst and giving you something sweet. That ain't what we want. We want the gospel, and we want the real gospel. I don't know about y'all. Let me see who, who am I talking to on this page. Let me see what I'm talking about. No, no, I, no, don't settle. No, no, don't settle. Don't settle. And I'm not settling, I'm not settling for fake. I don't want what look like God. I don't want what sound like God. I don't want what feel like God. I want what is God. I want what is God. Because when it's really God, don't nobody have to babysit it. When it's really God, that thing get placed in a place in your spirit, in your womb, that don't nobody have to watch it. Don't nobody have to babysit it. And I'm telling you, I, I'm carrying a burden right now. I'm carrying a burden. Sometimes I go up and down the Facebook page and I be looking at stuff and I be like, God, no. I be looking at all these little kids. I don't know if some of y'all have seen them now. Looking at all these little kids out here with microphones and people posting them and children just to preach. And you don't even know what you're preaching about. You don't even know what you're saying. You don't even know what you're saying. We're already raising up another inner a group to be entertainers. I don't know, y'all. Maybe that's just me. Maybe that's just me. Maybe that's just me. We cannot, we cannot become the manufacturers of fake by giving permission to those that do not possess the power. We can't do that, man. Your hunger is real. Your thirst is real. This conference that I'm getting ready to preach at on Thursday and Friday, call I'm thirsty in Alabama. That's real. You ain't naming no title, I'm thirsty. And don't nobody want nothing. Because everybody know, everybody know that there's a, there's been a dry spell in the kingdom. It, tap that screen, y'all. Is it just me or am I having a moment? Is it me or am I having, there's been a dry spell in the kingdom. And I've been feeling God wake up some nerve envies because me i'm just gonna be straight honest with you i was like god i'm good you know i'm good i've done it i've done it. things that i've accomplished in ministry and places that i've gone and things that i've seen i'm good i don't need to do this but i felt the lord starting to wake up you know i had an old injury once and um it healed and this is a true story. And two years later, I was walking down the street and it felt like fire hit my leg. Like sheer fire. I screamed out in the streets. And I was in so much pain. And I called the doctor. And the doctor said, Juanita, sometimes when you have an injury, that thing is injured all the way to the nerve. And apparently your nerves are being healed and your nerves are waking up and now you're feeling what the nerve went through 
but even though it's hurting to you, it's healing. And I said, my God. I said, my God. And that's what I'm saying to you. I feel the nerves under my skin starting to wake up again. I feel that thing coming back in me that says, I want to feed some children. I want to help birth somebody out. I want to bring some people to life. Because I'm going to tell you something. I was letting God use me, but I wasn't, mm -mm, I wasn't trying to go all that deep no more. Because you know what? Mm -mm, God, that's a cost right there. That's a price. But I feel it because I hear the Lord saying the dry spell is over. I hear him saying it. I hear the Lord saying the dry spell is over. I hear the Lord saying those that have been on the backside of the desert, like the mother Dupree's, like the mother stack. I hear the Lord saying that there is a resurging of the true anointing of God. And in that resurging, there's going to be a very strong rebuke. In that resurging, you're going to see the penalty that God is going to allow some people to go through who willfully set out to be unsanctified, but to seduce the people of God. And I'm here to tell you right now, you on the right track. That's that, 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 that seek that's going on inside of you, that thing where you can't get enough of the word, that thing that your spirit is crying out for change, it's because the Lord has predestined to be so that you not be lost. And that you be found worthy. And not only that, you make it to destiny, not only in heaven, but here on earth. That you fulfill everything that God has called you to do. And that you don't miss not one assignment. When I stood on that television last night, I could feel that thing. And it was like, God, what is going on? What am I feeling? And he said, tonight, and to confirm it, he said, tonight. You got to break through. You got to break through because this is not about you being here on television. It's about the breakthrough. Somebody need to start hitting that rock and hitting that rock until that rock yields water. And then I wake up today and somebody posted something and said, this is to you, Juanita Bynum. And it's on Facebook. And it was rain that the man got out of his car and said, I can't believe this. And it was a pouring down like a like a portal of rain in one spot and when he put the camera everywhere else all around the world all around the whole as far as you could see there was no rain but it was raining in one spot and i began to speak in tongues and god said to me then he said all i need is one portal and i'll send the rain because even though it's raining in that watch this even though it's raining in that one spot because it's constantly hitting that spot don't fool yourself. The ground is being flooded. The ground is being flooded. And I believe God is calling you to be that portal. You watching today? I believe God is calling you because he wants to send the rain. And I don't know why I keep hearing this, that the latter rain shall be greater than the former rain. And we are about to experience, I know people call it revival. We're about to see revival. Mm -hmm. I I want to I want to choose to say this we are about to experience an encounter the real presence of the Lord because there's been a, a mirage that have invaded the earth land. you know a mirage when you're in the desert you can get so thirsty and so dehydrated that you start seeing water and it ain't no water and you start jumping in sand and rolling in sand and putting sand in your mouth because in your mind you seeing water that's what it's been like some of the stuff out here that we've been eating it ain't been nothing but sand and the devil done showed you a mirage like it's real water but the true water of the spirit is coming it's being released last night I felt it I felt it I felt it and that's what we've been doing on this page. So if you're wondering why and you got people sitting over there saying, yeah, well, I need to buy and got all these people following me. No, I don't. No, I don't. These people are not following me. They're following God. And the minute they don't sense God in me, they're going to leave this page. And I'll be glad when everybody just get that. 
I'll be glad when everybody get that a wound that had been birthed out in the spirit cannot be fed by a wound that's birthed out in the flesh. It is temporary, and the people will only be there temporary. That's it. They won't be there for any length of time because eternity is not in the womb that's teaching. And don't you ever forget that. I gotta go. I gotta preach tonight, live on television. And I'm asking every bumblebee on this page, everybody on this page to pray for me. Pray for me. If you know, I, you know, I, I've, been, I, I've been sending messages to Mother Stacks. Pray for me because my new assignment is great. I'm seeing it. It's being revealed to me and it's great. But I'm willing. I just need the strength of God. Tonight, I need intercessors. I need the intercessors on this page to go in prayer for me at 8 o'clock tonight. Eastern Standard Time. 8 o'clock tonight. I need you to pray for me. I need you to pray for me. Because what I have to stand up and do, it affects the world. It's not me having a moment. It's not, ooh, see, one need to buy it. That's so old. Do you know how long I've been doing TV? I've been doing too long for it to impress me now. Too long. This is about the business, kingdom business. And I don't want to miss. My body is tired. My body is weary. But I know my spirit is willing and the flesh is weak. But I know if I had some people on this page that would agree that at 8 o'clock, that 